Hi there, welcome to Premium Builds. I'm John, and this is our high-end air cooler roundup. PremiumBuilds.com is your go-to site for information, tips, and component selection choices to help you plan your next build. In this test, we've got coolers that will handle any consumer CPU on the market, but which one's right for you? There are basically two competitors at this end of the market, Noctua and Be Quiet. So we've bought a range of their coolers to test them out, test fit them, and find out which ones we can recommend to you for your builds. We'll take you through the install, compatibilities, any quirks of the designs, and make some recommendations for your next build. These coolers are the go-to for high-performance CPU cooling when exceptional reliability and low noise are the priorities. First up, in the high mid-range, we've got the Noctua NH-U12A, a compact cooler from Noctua using a pair of 120mm fans. Up against it is the cheaper Be Quiet Dark Rock 4, a single fan cooler that uses a 135mm fan. Above this in price and performance sits the Noctua NHD15S, and we're testing the black Chromax version here. It uses a single 140mm fan to deliver excellent heat dissipation with minimal noise. Finally, at the top of the range, we've got the Noctua NHD15 against the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4. Both of these coolers use a split fin stack and two fans to deliver the ultimate in-air cooling, but which one wins out? We've tested these coolers primarily through ease of fitment, any compatibility issues or system integration points you'll want to consider, and we've run some quick testing to look at both noise and thermal performance. There are other tests and review sites that have done this in more depth, but it does require expensive and specialised equipment and a very rigorous process to obtain reliable and repeatable numbers. All of these coolers are capable of exceptionally low noise and great cooling, so take our results as an insight into their performance rather than a rigorous metric on which to base a decision. We think other factors are actually more important to your decision making than a 1 to 2 degree Celsius difference in running temperatures on the CPU. So take our numbers with a pinch of salt and take a look at the other aspects that you're going to need to consider when you're choosing the cooler for your system. Let's dig into the cooler starting with Noctua. The NHU12A is a high performance cooler with 7 heat pipes, a single fin stack and a pair of 120mm fans in push-pull configuration. It comes supplied with a wealth of high quality fitting equipment, including thermal paste, a fan splitter, and quiet fan adapters, and there's nicely produced instructions. There's a robust metal backplate for Intel. Noctua also divide their fitting equipment up neatly into AMD and Intel options, although there is a little bit of confusion over the bushings to use. There's white, beige, and black bushings supplied, and it's the black ones that are used for the Intel LGA1200 and LGA1155 fitment, but I had to check this with Noctua's online fitting videos as the instructions weren't clear. They just give you a part number when stating the colour would have been far more helpful. The brackets are robust and you can fit the fin stack horizontally or vertically according to preference. There's no compatibility issues with RAM or a GPU on an M80X motherboard, so it's a versatile cooler. Thermal performance is excellent as you'd expect, and the fans are barely audible although they run at 1200 RPM, which is faster than 140mm fans on the other coolers in this test. The fans aren't intrusive, despite the fact that they're a bit smaller, because they're of exceptional quality. The temperatures are on a par with the larger coolers sitting at 60 degrees Celsius. Noctua suggests using one of the fans to replace the case exhaust, and in most configurations we'd second that as a great alternative to lower noise without harming temperatures at all. Realistically, any criticism is either personal preference or splitting hairs. The instructions could clear up the bushing confusion with a single mention of the correct colour. The colour of the fans is entirely down to preference, but they are somewhat love or hate, and hard to integrate into a more showy build. There are Chromax adapters to cover the heat fin stack, but they are extra money. It also feels a little expensive, largely down to the very high quality of the fans included, which are unrivaled. Ultimately then, this cooler is all about performance in a 120mm package, and it absolutely nails that. If you want unrivaled thermal and acoustic performance in a slightly more compact form factor, it's the right cooler for you. Matching the NHU12A in size is the Be Quiet Dark Rock 4. This is a six heat pipe heatsink with a single 135mm fan. This cooler is supplied with a bar style retainer and high quality bracketry as well as a really high quality long reach screwdriver that you can use for the rest of the PC build. You do have to assemble the metal backplate and pins which is a bit fiddly, but other than that fitting is straightforward. The fan does interfere with the first RAM slot for all but the lowest profile RAM, so if you're planning four sticks you might want to look elsewhere, or else ensure that the case has clearance for the fan to be mounted higher, which spoils the look a little bit. You could also mount the fan behind the cooler, with a slight detriment to performance. In our testing you can see that the fan speed is amongst the lowest at just 800 RPM, whilst it allows temperatures to sit a little higher at 70 degrees Celsius. Adjusting fan speed allows you to strike the balance that's right for you. It's well suited to high performance AMD CPUs, and it'll handle Intel's latest i5 CPUs and the i7 non-K CPUs too. If you're looking at cooling an i9, the 10850K or an 11900K for example, or the i7K series CPUs, 
we'd recommend something with more cooling power as those CPUs can overwhelm even this cooler. For everything else, it's recommended as a compatible, well-made and good-looking cooler with great reliability and performance. Straddling the gap from single to dual fan coolers in Noctua's range, the NHD15S is a cooler with a split heat stack with six heat pipes and it's supplied with a single fan. The cold plate is offset to provide more versatile compatibility with GPUs. It'll fit on an MATX motherboard with a GPU in the top slot, unlike its bigger brother, the D15 Non-S. As you'd expect, given Noctua's attention to detail, the bracketry is blacked out on this Chromax version to match the cooler. It's easy enough to fit, though we'd recommend working out whether you're better off fitting the cooler when the motherboard is inside the case or outside. This really depends on access into your case around the cooler once fitted, and it's even more of an issue on the larger dual fan version. Under test, it produces excellent thermals sitting at around 62 Celsius CPU temperature, and as you'd expect, virtually zero fan noise, with the 140mm fan at about 850 RPM under load. It's an excellent cooler, and usefully addresses some of the compatibility issues of its bigger brother, making it a great all-rounder for a high-end CPU. Moving on to the next Be Quiet cooler, the Dark Rock Pro 4 sits at the top of their product lineup. It uses a split thin stack and 135mm and 120mm fan at the front face to drive air right through in a push-pull configuration. The smaller fan addresses the RAM overhang to a degree, but you are going to want to carefully check RAM height before ordering this cooler, it does overhang slots and will obscure RGB RAM. Fitting equipment is high quality and the fitting procedure is well explained, but tricky. There's a reason they include the screwdriver. It's absolutely necessary to reach the screw positions through the facing plate. Doing up the fan retention clips can be tricky if the case doesn't allow good access. Whilst if you choose to fit the cooler prying to fit the motherboard, you can run into problems screwing down the upper motherboard screw or fitting power plugs and fan plugs. Plan your build process around this cooler. Once assembled, the cooler gives one of the cleanest and most impressive appearances of any air cooler, and thermal and noise performance is top-notch too. The cooler will handle anything short of overclocking the most demanding consumer CPUs, for which you'll want a water cooler with a large radiator or a custom loop anyway. Thermal performance matches all but the Noctua NHD15 in our test, with a low fan speed of 850 RPM. It takes our recommendation due to the combination of performance, looks and price versus the competition from Noctua, and the fact it's slightly more compatible with GPUs and RAM. And finally we come to the largest and most expensive air cooler in this test, the Noctua NHD15. This is a split heat stack cooler, but despite being only one letter different in name from the NHD15S, there are some considerable physical differences. The cold plate is not offset, meaning this cooler is only compatible with ATX motherboards if you have a GPU in the top slot. It's supplied with two fans of equal size, so the front fan will interfere with the RAM unless mounted higher, or at the rear of the cooler, not the front. Fitting is straightforward, but careful planning needs to go into the order of operations. You'll need to fit RAM before the cooler itself, and ensure that you plug in motherboard plugs before fitting the cooler. Access to do up the fan clips can be hard too if you're installing it inside the case. You'll need a large case and some serious planning to fit this cooler into your build. Once fitted, this cooler nails the performance metrics. It's silent and powerful. It keeps temperatures the lowest of any cooler on test at 58 degrees Celsius with fan speeds matching the other high performance coolers at 850 RPM. It's the go-to solution where reliability and performance trump any other considerations, with redundancy provided by the dual fans. The downsides are really the cost, and the compatibility cascade you need to consider, from motherboard to case size to RAM selection to case type, to ensure that it fits with your other components. The looks are down to personal taste, and whilst I've seen builds which use the Noctua colour scheme to a great success as a theme, there's also a Chromax black version for $10 more if you prefer that, or even Chromax colour panels to match other colour themes though these do add considerably to the cost. This is undoubtedly the best performing cooler in the test, but you will need to plan your build carefully to incorporate it. The other coolers like the NHD15S or the Dark Rock Pro 4 come very close to it in performance, but are much more user-friendly to integrate into a build, and they offer better value too. So there we have it, that's our roundup of the best air coolers you can currently buy. They are all excellent performers in their own right. Finding the right one for you is really about your balance of cost, value, thermal performance and noise. The dual fan models on test here will handle even the most demanding consumer CPUs currently on the market. Please check out the companion article to this video over on premiumbuilds.com. We go into a little bit more depth with some more information to help you make up your mind. We've also got a wealth of other information there about all manner of components, helping you to choose the right parts for your next PC. We're also in the process of producing our own how-to videos to show you how to fit each of these coolers on both Intel and AMD. So check back and you'll find those and they can assist you in your build as well. We've got some big projects in the pipeline that will empower you to make your own builds using parts that we've pre-selected for performance and value. So keep an eye out, it's going to be a fantastic resource for anyone looking to build their own PC.